Hello everyone and welcome to another brief tutorial. It's been a while since my last one and I figured I may as well bring you another one. Um, today I will show you save changes, yes, I was testing a sprite, so don't mind that too much. Continue, yes. Oh dear, well, that's missing now. Anyhow, uh, let's go to the bottom of the eternity. Hang on, let me uh, delete that really quick. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna add a doll. Doll. Yes. Okay, now. <laughs> now I will show you what I plan to teach you. So, say you have a character and you want them to look like they're carrying an object. In this instance, a lantern. Now, you will need two sprites, and a little bit of scripting. Well, not really scripting as much as common eventing. But we'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. So, we have our lantern here. We're going to pick it up. And we're going to go to our items. And don't mind the, um, the menu too much. That's something I'm going to teach you in my next tutorial. We're going to put on the lantern. So we're going to use it. We're going to go yes. And now she looks like she's carrying a lantern. Now if I actually had a dark in here it would look much cooler, but I figured it would just be better if I actually had her visible. Now this is a, the second sprite I made for this. Now depending on what you want your sprite to carry, you may want to have more than two. Now then, you can go back to items and we can put away our lantern and then she's back to normal. And this can be done over and over again. So, I'm going to close it. And now we're going to, first we're going to look at this event. First, you need to know how to put a lantern into your inventory. And this is just for anyone who, for whatever reason, does not know how to put something in the inventory. So, we have our graphic set and a direction fix. Believe me, you're going to want that set, otherwise it's going to flip-flop to another one. Like for example, here's a, it's a 3 by 4 arrangement, so if you were to have it not set as direction fix, it would turn into this up here, because it would be the downward facing one. Um, change items is over here. Add a lantern. Then control cell switch A on so that once you have the lantern picked up, it just becomes a blank graphic. So now we're going to go to our database and we're going to go to our items right here. And I've already cleared it out so it's just the one item and I renamed it as lantern. It's lantern and its effect calls upon a common event and I'll get to that in just a moment. And let's see. Now we're going to go to our common events because we need to get that set up. Now then, this is what makes all the magic happen. The common event. It doesn't have a trigger because it's called upon by the item itself. So we don't need a trigger or anything or a condition switch. We just need its name and what it does here. I have it set up as a conditional branch. Which is right here in flow control. And for the first question, and the first question is assuming that they switch lantern equipped is on. So if it is on, it'll ask if you want to put the lantern away. And upon yes, it'll change the actor graphic to the normal one, and it will turn the switch, the lantern equipped switch, off. So really, you only need one switch for this as well. Now then, with that turned off, it would go to else, which is use lantern, yes, no choice. And when yes, change the actor graphic to the sprite with a light. And then it would turn these, and there's the control switch, which would tell you to turn it on. 
then of course no and that it won't do anything. And then all you would have to do to connect it to the common event is to go to effects, other, and right here. And again, you just go in, and then you would have it right here. Do you want to lose the No. You don't use it. I don't know why I felt the need to show it like that. Because I mean, it's pretty obvious, but. <laughs> Anyhow, that's, th that's it for this tutorial. I'm going to move it off there now. I hope it has been helpful in some respects. You can also use this as well to make a sprite that's holding a weapon. And, um,. Since I'm using the XP sprite size right here, it's a max sprite. Um, kind of just. Oh, um, much better. Anyway, um, I would recommend using my tile set grid guide for this, mainly because the spacing for tile sets is also the same amount of spacing for sprites and how much room they have to move around and how much space you can give them for a given animation such as their walking animation without being too intrusive on the other frames uh, sorry I'm working on something else um, open no, no 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 ignore that Oh gosh. Shall I do I have it here somewhere? Slide, me, me, me. I thought I did have it. Yeah. it. Must have closed it out. Open. And uh, let me see here. Um, you know, it's just an example. Screw it. So I'll just bring these guys in. Copy and I'll paste them in just as a mere example. And I see the VX sprites fit perfectly because they are of the VX RTP. An XP size, an XP or a max size sprite is going to take up two tile spaces roughly, but they still have the same amount of space width wise. So I'm just telling you that so you guys can bear it in mind when you're adding in little effects, because if they're holding a baseball bat, you don't want to go any further than the amount of space they're already in. No. Mm, no. So, um, I hope that has helped you guys in some way. I'm sorry that that's still been quite ramblematic. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial on getting your um, you're getting your menu to look like this. And I still need to fix that. So, that'll be fixed next time. See y'all next, see y'all later.